Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I wanna go over the kernel and range of the linear transformation and sometime in the lecture, I'm gonna call that LT. And also we're gonna talk very lightly, lightly about one-to-one -one and onto transformation. In my next video, I'm gonna cover those in detail. So, First, let's go over the definition. So if you have a transformation from Rn to Rm, and that's a linear transformation, then we can write T of X equals to A times X, where A is an M by N matrix. And please be careful, it's an M by N matrix. And I put the note here for you. And in the last video we saw, we have a linear transformation if and only if you can perform the action by a matrix multiplication. So there is always a matrix involved in a linear transformation. Now let's go over the kernel of T. So what's the kernel of T? The kernel of T is the solution of the homogeneous system. You take the same matrix, multiply it by X, and you get the zero vector we have seen homogeneous system in in our uh, last videos and if you remember this is also the null space of a and i call that the null space of a here so whenever you want to find the kernel of a linear transformation you just find the null space of that given matrix now, what is the range of uh, the linear transformation? The range is the just the column space of A, and we can call that the call space of A. Of A. One thing to notice here, you're gonna see sometimes A in the notations and sometimes T. These are uh, the same matrix. So I did put a summary here. We have a linear transformation and that's from Rn to Rm. The curve of T, these are vectors in Rn and uh, it's that's how you write it. Basically, when you write the homogeneous system, that's T of B equals to zero M. And please remember that's in Rn in the example that is coming, I'll show it to you. Range of T, these are some vectors in Rm where W equals to T of B. And uh, again, for some vectors in Rm, and that's in Rm. So the emphasis is very important here. Curve of this from Rn and range of this from Rm. And don't forget our matrix was an M by N matrix. I keep repeating that because uh, it's important to know. Now we also have the nullity of the transformation and that's just the dimension of the null space. As we notice the dimension of the null space are the vectors in uh, the basis of the null space, the number of vectors. And uh, this is also again you can see A or T, the notation, and that's the dimension of the kernel. Rank of T, or rank of the transformation, is the dimension of the call space. Again, the number of the vectors in the uh, basis of the call space of A. You can see also that notation, and that's called the dimension of the range of the transformation. Now, number three, if you have a transformation again from Rn to Rm is linear, of a linear transformation, you can write T of X equals to A times X. In this case, if you take the rank of the transformation plus the nullity of the transformation, you should get N. That's the dimension theorem of a linear transformation. And this is the same thing as the dimension of the range plus the dimension of the kernel. 
and that's going to give you the dimension of the domain of t. Now let's see if you want to kind of see the picture. So again, here we have a transformation and we're going from Rn to Rm. The first thing to know the domain of this transformation, that's Rn, the, the co-domain, that's what we call it is Rm and sometimes they can be the same. I put the boxes the same size here, but in, the, uh, in some examples, uh, you'll see how that works. Now, what's the range of T? These are some vectors in Rm. So, and as you see that those vectors are covering that. So this part is called the range of T. Sometimes the range of T can be the entire Rm and you'll see how that works and how we call that transformation. And I want you to notice also range of T is in Rm, which is the codomain of the transformation. Then we have, uh, we can have here, that's, let me put number two here. Then we have the curve of T. Curve of T is right here and that's in Rn. So whatever vectors that make uh, the transformation zero, basically when you write the homogeneous system. So, and you get those uh, vectors and that's called the curve of T. So let's do an example so you can see how this works. Let's say we have a transformation. We're going from R3 to R4. In this example, I, you are given the matrix A, which is same as the matrix T. The first thing you want to do is find the RREF of that because all the information is you can get from the RREF of A or RREF of T, just like uh, last time when we were finding the null space, call space, and uh, the rule space of a matrix. It works exactly the same way. So now if I want to find the range of T, we said the range of T is just the span of the call space or column space of A. And the span of the call space of A, a basis in the call space of A here, just like the last video I talked. So what you need to do is take the pivot columns and take the corresponding columns in the original matrix. And these are going to be the basis for the call space. So I have two vectors here. So that's the first one. And that's the second one. So basically, the range of the transformation is the span of these two vectors. And please notice that's in R4. So as each vector has four components. Now, if I say, what is the rank of T? Rank of T is the dimension of these bases. We have two vectors and that's two. So, and again, this is in uh, R4, which is codomain of, uh, of T and it's right here. The kernel of T, all you do is to solve again, just like we did in the last videos and last lectures, the homogeneous system. So you can directly go to RREF. Here we see that we have two pivot columns and this one is the non-pivot one. Therefore that's X3 is the free variable. So you rewrite the system from here. You have X1 plus uh, 2X3 and uh, let me fix that. So that's going to be 2x3, which is, and then you can isolate. So that's going x1 is going to be negative 2x3, which is the same thing as negative 2t. And from the second 
equation, you have x2 plus 3x3 equals to 0. You isolate x2, you get negative 3x3 or negative 3t. So if we come back and write this again, we know x1 is negative 2t. And then we fix that, so that's going to be negative 2. You can factor out t and you get negative 2, negative 3, and 1. So the curve of t is the span of the null space of A, as I said, and that's the span of this set. And this is in R3, as we see it here. That's in the domain of uh, t. Now, the number of vectors in these spaces is 1, so curve of t here is 1. Now, if we apply the dimension theorem here, we found rank of t, which is the number of vectors in the call space, is 2. Then the curve of t is just the dimension of the null space, or the nullity of t or a, and that's 1. And if you add them, you get 3, and that's the same thing as n, which is the dimension of the domain. Now, I want to just give you a little information about one-to-one -one and on two transformation. And in the next lecture, next video, I'm going to do a detailed work on that. A linear transformation, T, is one-to-one uh, -one if and only if curve of T is the zero vector. So, and what's the meaning of that? When you solve AX equals to zero, has only the trivial solution. So when that happens, then you can uh, say it's a one-to-one -one transformation. And what that is exactly, I'll go over that in the next video lecture. Now, if you want to find that fast, check the REF or R. And the REF or R does not have any free variables. So once you do the RREF and you don't get any free variables, then you can say that the transformation is one to one. Then the second one, a linear transformation T is onto if and only if rank of T equals to M, uh, which is the domain, the, the co-domain actually. So how you can check that fast, you do the REF of A, which is R does not have any rows of of only consisting of zeros. So if we double check, let's double check our linear transformation in this example. So here, if you notice, we do have rows consisting of zeros. So right away, if you look at this transformation, you can say it's not on two. And if you check the RREF again, you do have a free variable here. So if that happens, then this is not one to one neither. So this is not on two and not one to one. Again, this is fast way of checking. In the next video, I'll just talk about uh, one to one and on two transformation so you can understand the details very well. I think that's it for this uh, video. Thank you for watching. And uh, one more time, please watch it two, three times. And uh, have a good one, everyone. I'll see you in my next lecture, next video.